can point to because I think the, the new test is on um, the 10.2. So what I've been doing is going into the 10.0 mm -hmm. and trying to understand the difference. So I, I have them all kind of, I think I understand everything in 9.0. Um, but there was one thing with the natting that I wasn't completely sure on. So if I'm doing um, destination nats and the DNS rewrite portion of it, um, so, you know, like I'm doing split DNS or um, I'm using just DNS and I'm having to do like U-turn um, NATs and things like that. What I wasn't understanding is there are the two types of DNS rewrite. There was the forward rewrite and the reverse DNS yes, I... rewrite. And I wasn't understanding the use case of the two of those and also in the Tino. Um, if you're doing like a, a source net, it had the option to make it bi-directional. So mm -hmm. is that bi-directional button just like making it so that you don't have to add extra inbound or um, destination nets um, when you're creating your source net, if it's like for a single IP or mm -hmm. is that like a different um, use? So the one thing like in the source net, right? You're asking like uh, we have this source net. These are all sections we have, right? Mm -hmm. So oh, we just have to do the netting, right? Based on the like uh, static, and we have the bi-direction, right? This is the same mm -hmm. thing you're talking, right? But yeah, yeah. So dynamic, dynamic if you do that bi-directional, yeah. Bi-directional. That means if you are going to do the bi-directional, so that means let's suppose what is happening. If we have the source, right? Source IP address and we have the destination IP address and you not clicking the bi-directional. So only the traffic is going to be initiated from this device and then NAT is going to be work and then it will get the reply. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if he is going to initiate the traffic to this source, it will never work. Uh... It will never work. So in case of the bi-directional, right? So in case of the anyone is going to initiate the traffic, right? The bi-directional policy is going to get the both way mapping. So even this source is if you want to NAT on the same, like it is also possible. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So you still need appropriate security policy. You still need to add the rules to allow the um, outside guy to let me, yeah, initiate let me. the connection. That's let just me. talk taking care of yes that is different that is definitely required so let me give the little bit documentation part as well so you'll understand in a better way so we, you see here the bi-directional it's optional right so mm -hmm. it is written at enable bi-directional translate a static IP source address translation if you want firewall to create the corresponding NAT translation in opposite direction if you configure just opposite gotcha. means if you don't want to do the manual translation and you want to use the same as a source uh, translation in the reverse traffic that is going to help you in the bi-directional translations. This is the optional. You can do that. So just avoid additional one rule to write it. Right. Got it? So if yep. you read it more, if you enable the bi-directional translation, you must ensure that you have security policy. Same thing you asking, right? In yep. place to control the board direction. So you forward direction traffic security policy already created. But what about a reverse direction? You don't have. So you, if you're enabling this, so NAT is going to be there, but you also need to enable the security policy as well. Then it is going to work for you. Okay. So is it recommend? So yeah. So it's pro probably just to avoid misconfigurations and to allow access that you don't intend. You should probably not use the bidirectional unless that's your intent is to allow those outside devices to initiate inbound traffic. Right, right. So okay. you clear with this one? Salim, yes. second one? Yep. The second one you ask for the DNS rewrite. So you're absolutely yes. right. We have the reverse, that is the default one. For what you want, you can use it. Let's read it and then I can explain it uh, in my wording as well. So you can see that after this pan OS 9.0.2 and later release, right? If destination NAT policy rule type it's IPv4 and the destination address are translated to the IP address. You can enable the DNS rewrite option, right? 
you can enable dns rewrite if you use destination nat right and also use dns service on one side of the firewall to resolve any kind of dfq event for the client on the other side of the firewall when dns respond uh, traversed the firewall the firewall read the ip in the dns response relative to the original destination address or translate destination address to that DNS response match in the NAT policy rule. I'll explain in my wording, just read out, okay? A single NAT policy rule has the firewall perform the NAT package and, and that match the rule and perform the NAT IP address translation DNS response that match the rule. You must specify the firewall perform the NAT on the IP address in the DNS response Related to the NAT rule and the reverse or forward, whatever you want to define. So default is going to be reverse. So in this, what is going to happen if the packet is the DNS response, right? That match the translation destination address in the rule. Translated, whatever translate destination respond using the reverse translation that you use. For example, if the translation is this one to this one, the firewall will rewrite the DNS response from this to this. So in simple meaning, you can understand DNS rewrite means any FQD and any IP you want to just map. Let's suppose any DNS IP you have, this is a DNS IP. Just think means this is the actual light uh, translated IP. You have the destination, but you want to map into the public to private. So this is mm -hmm. your translation, right? So mm -hmm. this is your like kind of the, your original traffic is going to hit, right? But mm -hmm. in the reverse direction, if the packet is going to be come again, and then you want to rewrite means you want to translate this IP to this, then it is going to use the reverse one. It should make making sense means let's suppose any FQ when you're going to use that. And this IP is any FQ when you're going to use it, that is might be the X, Y, Z dot com. So this must be translated. Who is going to translate that DNS? Right. Let's say it is going to resolve that 1.1.1.10. Then you want to do the NAT destination NAT. You want to translate from this IP to this IP. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So this translation is going to be client, but let's suppose client also want to again reach to this destination. So reverse mm -hmm. translation also required. So you just have to do the DNS rewrite. So they have the corresponding entry. The same thing they are talking means the traffic will come from the 192.168.1.0.10, sorry, and it is going to rewrite to the 1.1.1.10. So this is the same thing. If the packet in the DNS response that match the translated IP address in the rule, if the packet DNS response means if you're doing a DNS query, right? And if it's mm -hmm. going to match the IP, right? Whatever the address using the DNS uh, translation, like whatever you are going to do that, then what is going to happen The translate the DNS response using the reverse translation that rule uses means mm -hmm. you probably will find that. Let me show you here. If I'll go DNS rewrite, right? So by, the, by default, you have the reverse one, right? So mm -hmm. the reverse one, that means whatever the traffic means you have the source means uh, you have the any kind of the static you want to translate right then you just have to use it so static ip let's suppose I want to get you back to the original yeah, yeah this is the original packet this is my source right and i want to translate so this is going to maintain the enable dns reader means dns entry is going to be there let's and i'm assuming that dns is going to come from the uh, configure service or management the service ip that you have configured for that network um, so do you need a firewall security policy for the firewall to be able to talk to the, DNS. the client or by, uh-huh. Both way DNS server also, you need to be make the reachable means one DNS server, whatever available in the firewall that right, right. should be reachable. So you go in the devices, your first DNS should be reachable. So yeah. by default I'll go. And the second, whatever the client IP you have in regard of the FQ even that policy should be there. You can create the policy based on the FQDN, but that DNS entry is going to be there in the mm -hmm. device itself. So if I go here, let me go in the services. So you yep. see, we have the DNS server as well. So this DNS yep. server must be there and it should be reachable. Then right now there is no DNS server. So probably we can 
configure a DNS server. Let's suppose 1.1.1.1, right? So mm -hmm. this is going to first talk to DNS. Let's suppose you going here in the policy and after going in the policy, you're going in a destination NAT and this time you are not using the IP. You're just using the, this app QDN, okay? Okay. So who is going to resolve, uh, resolve that? DNS server, right? And then mm -hmm. you are creating this reverse one. So it is going to maintain one of the entry in their database. So any packet is going to reply back from this particular. So reverse mapping is going to happen from this to this as well. So same thing yes. it is done. You got it? The reverse one first? Yes. Okay. Now let's also forward one. So if packet in the DNS response that match the original destination address. If packet in a DNS response means you query the DNS. And in response, if reply is going to come and that is going to match the original IP address, destination. What is the original IP? This is my original. See? Mm -hmm. So what is going to happen? That translate the DNS response using the same translation, the rule used. Translate the DNS response means it is going to translate your DNS response by using the same trans translation means whatever DNS translation you will just have to do the mapping or whatever the policy you created just allow the you know uh, any FQD1 to IP conversion like that is going to be converted likewise you can see there is given some example if the rule translated from this to this right forward mm -hmm. again going to rewrite the same kind of the communication so here only difference reverse and forwarding is like you can see if the Packet in the DNS response means it is just the response matches the original destination address. And here, what is written? If the packet in DNS response matches the translated address, the translated address here and here the original address. This is the only difference. Ah. So this is talking about translator. What is translated? This is your translated address, right? Mm -hmm. And this is for your original address. The both case, the mapping is going to happen same. But you just understand like in this way, like one is for just to original packet, one is for the reverse packet. Okay, so the reverse makes a lot of sense to me. The forward one, so, okay, so my my source, original source, let's say it's 192.168.1.1. And then for the, if I do the forward rewrite, then it's mm. looking and it's saying that um, it's looking at my original destination which would be that public server possibly right so it could be the 1.1.1.1 or the 1.1.1.10 um and so it's looking at the 1.1.1.10 so then it's saying hey for the 1.1.1.10 send it back to my original source Okay, I understand the reverse one. I'm I'm still not quite understanding the forward. So see, both are a little bit confusing, right? So yeah. this one you understand, right? So you read the yeah, yeah. forward. Yeah, that one it, makes sense. So like if yeah. it hits my public IP or whatever, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, it's gonna rewrite it to the 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 original. So or the inside. I, yeah. So it's gonna make it so that the the client on the inside knows how to resolve for that host. All right, agree. So okay. you, you little bit have confusion forward, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So see the only difference here, if the packet in the DNS response, this all same, right? Mm -hmm. That matches in the original destination address. And here the matter translated destination address. This only two things having a difference, nothing more than that. So let me just simplify that matches the translated destination address in the rule. Mm -hmm. Okay. And matches the, your original destination in the rule. So what does it means mm -hmm. means let's suppose you have the, this is your packet, right? Mm -hmm. Original packet. And this is your source. I will just think about. 192.168.1.104 and you're just going to access gynet.com right 
So this mm -hmm. is your source IP address. This is your destination IP address. And this could be the original packet. And you must have to translate this packet, right? So the, mm -hmm. this is your translated packet. So source IP address, nothing they are talking about the source, right? So it is going to be always remain same. Now mm -hmm. they are talking about this one. So they are talking about the DNS response means if anything is going to come, right? You just have to any, any communication is going to happen. First, you have to go to the DNS server, right? Mm -hmm. DNS is going to give the response, right? So based on this DNS might be the IP is going to be converted in this way. Let me just write an IP address just for your understanding. Okay. 1.10. So this is talking the DNS response is going to get as a translated address means this one, not original address means you, your this F could even is a map on this public IP address. Just think about 192.168.1.178, right? This is your original mm -hmm. and this is your translated packet. Let me make in the, just give me one minute. Let me make the more relevant. So this is 172.16.10.10. Think this is a private. So this IP is a public, right? So first, mm -hmm. this is going to be normal translator. You are going to get this IP address. Make sense in normal translator. Mm -hmm. But if you're using the reverse one, right? So DNS is going to give directly your translated IP address. Means not the original. Means you just go to DNS. And we have the DNS rewrite means someone is going to come for this one, right? 178, you just translate on the 172, 16, 10.10. So that's why they're talking match the translation address in the rule means direct this IP you're going to get this in the first case, reverse one. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. So that is known as a reverse. But in the forward case, what is going to happen? packet DNS respond that match the original destination means it is just going to match this one only as your original destination. And based on that, they are, they are going to do the again translation as per your NAT rule, whatever they have means your public to private. So that's why they're talking about if the packet in the DNS response matches the original destination address in the rule, translate the DNS response using the same translation rule use means it's a little bit confusing, but you just think about in first scenario, you just have to do the DNS rewrite based on their original destination to your translated destination. And based on your DNS rewrite, it will directly give the translated IP to go to the destination. But if you're going to use the forward one, then they're going to use your original destination address. And based on that original uh, uh, destination address, they are going to use the NAT, NAT rule and they will just do the mapping for the translation. Mm. So little bit confusing, but you can just analyze the packet after doing the lab. You'll get that and might be, uh, you have to read a little bit more articles. So just get the motor, um, like uh, more understanding on it. For sure. Yeah, no. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that, that's about a, a, as much as I can absorb for today <laughs> anyway. <laughs> all right guys so no worry so we can close it here okay and we will discuss more about the ssr decryptions in the monday okay we'll discuss about the ssr decryption on the monday will it find for everyone because there is a less participant today so i don't want to continue the class okay guys done okay sir all right bye bye take care enjoy your rest of the evening see you on the monday okay. all right